Friends, once again, we are at Imperial Beach, California. Well, actually, that's Imperial Beach, California. There comes the helicopters again. Uh, so you'd think we're gonna shoot the, a Hyundai. Well, sorta, a Kia. And this time, not a compact car, but we are gonna shoot a crossover, an all new crossover at that, uh, the Kia Sportage. And this is kind of important to Kia, and we'll get into that in the full first drive review. So while we work on the full first drive review, why don't you and I do a tech review together, and we'll start where we always start, the engine. Okay, so before we start on bullets and numbers here, of course, we got these cool helicopters here again. Um, I don't think they're going to go for my trade like I tried last time with that Hyundai. I don't think they're going to go for this. Uh, there is an episode coming up where I bring much heavier metal, and I think they will go for it. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but what we got here now is actually two engines. Uh, this is the Fancy Dancy SX Turbo model. So let's start with the base model and use this as a stand-in. Uh, there is a 2.4 liter inline four-cylinder direct injected engine. Uh, that puts out 181 horsepower, which comes in at a relatively high engine speed, 6,000 RPM. And then the Torx 175 uh, also comes in at a relatively high engine speed, 4,000 RPM. Uh, ideally, I'd like to see that a little bit lower, especially at 2.4 uh, liters in displacement. Then we move up to this one here, and this is like the big bad daddy engine, uh, but it's actually smaller. So it's a two liter, direct injected turbocharged four cylinder engine. Now we've seen this engine in a number of other Hyundai and Kia cars. So we've driven this actually a couple times before, just not in the Sportage. So this one is 240 horsepower in front wheel drive guys, and that comes in at 6,000 RPM. But this one, this one is all wheel drive. So it's 237 horsepower, which also comes in at 6,000 RPM. Then the torque, and that's really what this engine is all about, 260 pound-feet of torque, which comes in at a stupidly low 1,350 RPM. That's the kind of thing we like to see. And it stays flat all the way up to 3,500 RPM. Now this, in either case, is connected to a six-speed automatic. Now we gotta put all this aside and focus on some of the driving dynamics bits, also things that we've seen in other Kias. So a little bit behind the scenes here, this spot where we have now shot here twice is rather distracting for me personally, an, an aviation geek, because you've got the airport over there. Then more importantly, there's a military base where just before we started shooting, an F-18 took off, incredibly cool. And then they have these military helicopters that have been coming in and out. And then of course, there's just the boats in the harbor. But you and I are here for a job. We need to focus on the tech review. Now, over the past couple of months, I have presented two cases to you. One is Cadillac and the other is Kia, where they have come out with a totally new vehicle. This is not a mid-cycle refresh, even though it looks a lot like the vehicle it replaces. But what they've done is everything underneath it has been completely re-engineered with a singular focus. And that focus is reducing the mass to increase efficiency and, well, strength at the same time. For example, this area here, and they did this on the X-T5 as well, this whole area here is high strength steel. And the idea is to use costlier materials, stronger materials, and here comes one of these helicopters, stronger materials here, and this way it's more focused where there's load bearing. So there's load here and there's load here, and the logic is by making it stronger here, you can use less parts in other areas. So think about it, less parts, less mass, equal less weight. So they've done this here, and they've done this now in two Cadillacs that I've presented to you. Now that's not the only thing they've done here. So take that, and then take a look at the construction materials in that Cadillac CT6, the X-T5, and if you remember, back to Colorado where we shot the Kia Optima, and here's yet, an, actually this one's an airplane, not a helicopter. Um, so if you remember back to Colorado where we shot the Kia Optima, it wasn't just targeted areas of high strength steel. What they did was, instead of riveting parts together, they literally pilfer technology from my beloved Lotus, and now they're gluing parts together. So they're bonding pieces together. 
So the logic is there are less parts in the construction method and there are less parts for the strength lowers the overall mass. Get it? Now, if you remember back to when we drove the Kia Sorento with Roman up in Lake Tahoe, that was also the first Kia we drove with this engine. Uh, that had something kind of surprising to it for a crossover. And if I'm really being honest, you look at this or the Sorento, they are crossovers. They are definitely not body on frame SUVs or really even related to an SUV because they're more built off car platforms. Both Roman and I were shocked that that car had a locking differential. Well, this one has the same thing. So instead of the computer controlling where the power goes, you can actually lock it in four-wheel drive. Neat touch for a crossover. Now, I think we need to look at some design bits on the inside. Okay, so the exterior from a design perspective is not a whole hell of a lot of different, at least from a shape perspective from the previous Sportage. Yes, the front is very different, and I would argue looks incredibly cool, but on this show, I, I never like to tell you what you can see, although I do want to point out, take a look at the fog lights. They're very unique for something that is not like a Porsche 911 GT3. Anyway, let's get to the interior. So notice what's going on here. If you look at the dashboard, this is very similar to what we saw in that Sorento. And then same kind of design language from the Optima. And now it's kind of cascaded down to the Sportage. So if you really think about what Kia is doing, or really Peter is doing here, he started with these wild designs in different segments. So there was the Optima, there was the Sorento, and then there was the Sportage. And the interiors were completely different. I would argue the interior of the previous Optima I liked a lot better than the current Optima. But notice what he's doing now. It's almost what Mercedes is doing, where they're making all of the interiors. Yes, they have their own personality depending on the car, but you can definitely tell they're connected in a La Familia kind of way. So in summary, what do we got? Uh, well, this is now what, the third or the fourth car that I've presented to you guys that is totally new, looks a lot like the car that came before it, but the engineering, the design, and more importantly, how the car is constructed is completely different than what came before it. How does that affect driving dynamics and how this thing drives? Well, that we'll find out in the full first drive review. But until then, I want to leave you guys with a question. And it's very similar to the question I left you guys, or really me and Melanie left you, with the Kia Optima, because they kind of did the same thing. They took a design, a shape you already knew, and from 50 feet away, 100 feet away, you know it's Kia Optima, and they kept it the same, even though it's a totally new car. And here with the Sportage, yeah, I, th I would argue it's significantly different in the front, but the shape is still the same, which I would argue perhaps Peter Schreier is trying to tell us something here about the future design of Kia. But at the end of the day, you guys are the ones writing the checks for these things. So is this enough change, just from a design perspective, in a totally new Kia? Because really, if you think about it, Kia is not like Mercedes. They're not like Cadillac, where there are more established brands. Kia is still a challenger brand. So where they grew, where people started to take them seriously is because they put these revolutionary designs in front of the buying public and people said, well, wait a minute, I actually have good credit and I want a Kia. So something obviously changed. So the question, very simple, is this. Is this enough of a change in design for a totally new Kia Sportage? Let me know why or why not and what region of the world you come from and let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV all in word, Moto Man TV on word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I wanna leave you with two things. Number one, make sure you download our fancy new mobile application, which you can download for free at Apple iTunes or Google Play. And number two, a little fun fact here. So uh, Peter Schreier, you saw him on the show with that Hyundai design concept from uh, Pebble Beach. I spent some time talking to him, and interesting tidbit he shared with me. When he talks about Kia design, the car that sticks with him the most was the first one he put his fingers on at Kia, and that was the Kia Sportage. Until we drive this car together, bis später.